Give someone a National Book Token and who knows where they'll end up. When I was about 10 or 12 years old, I read a book called City of Bells by Elizabeth Googe. She tells the story of somebody starting up their own bookshop. And there's a passage where the character describes walking around the empty shop before the books are in there, and he describes the smell of the wood and the feel of the wood and the way the floorboards creak and this sort of thing. And it was, it was very evocative for me. And then, of course, I forgot. I was up here on this floor one day and I suddenly realised I was in the bookshop that I had read about all those years ago and it just flooded back, the memory of it just flooded back and I knew that I was absolutely where I was supposed to be and everything was as it should be. The bookshop's been here for 25 years and it feels that the bookshop has always, in all of these 25 years, held a very special place in people's hearts and I feel very proud of that, it feels a very precious thing to me. Much Wenlock is a very, very special town. It's ancient and I certainly feel very rooted here. And I think there's something very special about the landscape. Shropshire has also inspired very many writers. The main one would be Hausman, who wrote A Shropshire Lad, which is one of Shropshire's most famous poems. There is this deep connection between landscape and self and the idea of the English identity. And I think it's to do with childhood, it's to do with nostalgia. And I think one of the things that is interesting about Shropshire is where it's located geographically. You know, we are on the edge. There's a sort of, you could call it almost like a kind of, we're on the edges. And I think being on the edges is something that writers have always liked. And I think that being an outsider and the fact that Shropshire has always been a bit of a cultural and provincial backwater has in many ways provided much of its artistic strength I think it's important to me because I was born here and I feel all sorts of connections to it. And a lot of them I don't understand and I'm still trying to explore, but I'm drawn to this place because I feel a sense of belonging and I want to try and understand that. When my parents first met, they'd only known one another three weeks and then they, they ran away to Shropshire together and had this wonderful week of talking about everything under the sun and reading poetry and then they never came back to Shropshire ever again. But because of a Shropshire lad and my father's um, passion for that, I always knew about Shropshire, even though I'd never been, been there. I came here in 1988 to make a garden. And I was, at that time, living and working in Dublin. And my husband was living and working in Oxford. I used to come home most weekends, and he would pick me up from Heathrow with um, a wallet of photographs of all the houses that he'd been to look at all over the, the country. And then one, one Friday night, he came and he said, I think I've found it. And that was Maura. When I first started making the garden, I used to find all these bits of china and earthenware in the soil. I was conscious that these were not just layers of history, that they were moments in, in other people's lives. These were, were probably the servants and that their lives were the sort of lives that didn't ever get recorded. And I suppose it was just at the time that, you know, I was losing both my parents and was conscious that their, their lives, their stories would just be completely lost. That was very much the rationale behind writing the book, to record their stories. P.G. Woodhouse once said that the Shropshire landscape was the paradise of England. For a whole range of reasons, he really stopped thinking about 
the future. He only looked backwards. And I think this is a very important thing that I think Shropshire in many ways is both guilty of, but I think it's what it also makes Shropshire rather special, is this idea of looking back to an Arcadia, looking back to um, what perhaps you could call um, a landscape of lost contempt. My father always gardened. He was a wonderful, passionate man who fell out with everybody all the time. And we were always moving house and we always lived in council houses. So always tiny little gardens and always moving on every few years. But he always made a garden where, wherever we were. And I just, um, and I suppose I just grew up thinking that that's what one did when you actually had had a house and settled down was make make a garden and in fact towards the end of his life it, it became a after a long long period of, of estrangement I mean sort of 30 years really um, it became a wonderful bond between us because I was when I was gardening here and was so happy and and it was what I should have been doing all my life really but um, and saying that I got that from him and I learnt that from him and, and how grateful I was. And of course, he'd, he'd dismiss it all. But I mean, I think my father's very strongly there at the roots of, of the garden. Hausman wrote sort of nostalgically, but Mary Webb, I think, was very much of this place. She was born down at Leighton by the river, but spent her childhood until she was 14 on Wenlock Edge itself, living at the Grange. She wrote as one of us, I think. The birds will sing when I am gone to stranger folk with stranger ways. Without a break, they'll whistle on in close and flowery orchard deeps, where once I loved them nights and days and never wreck of one that weeps. The bud that slept within the bark when I was there will break her bars. A small green flame from out the dark and round into a world and spread beneath the silver dews and stars, nor miss my bent, attentive head. <laughs>